Well, good morning. As, uh, as we come on this graduation Sunday, uh, uh, congratulating and recognizing our graduates, um, I, man, I, I, 
I got right up in front of your coil intro, didn't I? I apologize. I'll sit back down for one second. I'll, I'll talk to you guys here in just one second. Well, good morning. Um, man, it is good to be back. Uh, I've been out for the last couple weeks, and so as we come into worship, uh, to have uh, moments to where we recognize accomplishments, uh, but we also recognize uh, the grace and the ministry uh, of Jesus Christ, of uh, God the Father, of the Holy Spirit that enlivens us and brings us into this moment uh, for us to bring life into the world. Uh, so as we come into worship, a lot of great things going on today. Um, we have our, uh, our end of the school year celebration that's right after worship today, uh, kind of out in the parking lot. Um, I think whether, whether regardless, we're still doing something. Is that right? Yeah, so uh, be able to um, look forward to uh, hang out with us, even if you don't have uh, small kids. Um, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to come. Um, there's going to be some food trucks. There'll be some times to eat together, uh, hang out together, and uh, you'll have an amazing opportunity to uh, dunk Pastor Reed in the dunk tank. <laughs> I have been assured that he is the only pastor that's going to be in the dunk tank, right? <laughs> no? No more? Okay, well... Um, but a lot of great things going on. We've also got registration for Vacation Bible School. So as we kind of uh, look towards the end of the school year, if you have a chance to uh, check out a registration for Vacation Bible School. If you don't have any kids that might be uh, available for that, if you'd like to uh, share that information to any friends or neighbors or family members, uh, we'd love to be able to, uh, uh, be able to uh, share our Vacation Bible School with them again this year. As we turn our attention to what God is doing here this morning, uh, if you have a chance um, at some point during the worship service to fill out our Connect card to let us know that you're worshiping with us, um, we've got some prayer cards that are in the pews in front of you. If you've got a particular prayer request or celebration that you could share with us or just share with the pastors uh, so we can walk through those and either celebrate those or pray for them uh, alongside you as well. Uh, but as we come into worship today, uh, let's begin in a good and a deep way in sharing with our call to worship. Will you rise as you're able for our call to worship this morning? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the, Lord. praise the Lord indeed. And remain standing as you're able for our opening hymn of praise. And can it be all that I should gain?
Let us remain standing and join together in affirming our faith using the Apostles' Creed this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit it at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. Come now to a time of offering, a time where we're able to find ways to use the blessings that God has provided each and every one of us uh, to further God's kingdom, to help others know of God's love and God's presence. And just, we just want to thank you for your continued giving and remind you of all of the many ways in which you can give. Um, you can put an uh, offering in the offering plate as the ushers bring it by here in a second. You also uh, can mail an offering to the church. Uh, you can visit our website, alabasterfumc.org, and click on the Give tab. Uh, we also have text to give, and so you can text any amount to 84321, or you can download the Church Center app and search for Alabaster First United Methodist Church and give through the app. But we just appreciate all of those who have been faithful in their giving, uh, and, and we appreciate the many ways that uh, you all give. So I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward. Um, and my hope and prayer is that we just continue to find the different ways in which we are able to give back to God's church, whether that be through our prayers, through our presence, through our gifts, or through our service, so that we may continue uh, to share God's love and presence in the world. So let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, Lord, we just ask that your blessing be on these gifts that we are about to receive in order that we, your church, be able to use these gifts to help build your kingdom here and now. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
be seated. that some of you may think, why are y'all making such a big deal and taking me to all these parties? But 
Um, it is truly an accomplishment for you all, and you should be extremely proud of yourselves um, for making it here. I know that each and every one of us is extremely proud of you as well. So as I call your name, if you do not mind coming up and um, getting a gift. So Lee Harris. <laughs> Lauren Scarborough. Susanna Sissio, Samina Massey, and Tyler Smith. But Tyler couldn't be here with us, but his grandparents are, and they are going to take his gift on his behalf. And I'll tell you what I told um, your peers in 8:30. I heard a speech, a graduation speech recently, and it really hit me, and it's something I want to share with you all. We have pushed you all for success throughout your lifetimes, but as you move into the adult world, you are going to encounter failure, and failure is okay to have. Um, the goal there when you do fail is to pick yourself up, to move forward and learn from that particular place in your life. So I hope you all um, go out with blessings and enjoy this next phase in your life. Gracious Heavenly Father, on this special day, we celebrate those who are graduating, not just those graduating from high school, but those graduating all the way from preschool through college. We thank you for the continuous learning journey that we are all on. We learn all through our lives. It goes beyond formal schooling, but most, most importantly, out in the world as we encounter others. We ask that you would continue to show us who you have created us to be, that you would continue to go with us through our successes and our failures, that you would continue to write our story with us and allow us to use it in ministry to those that we meet and to the entire world. As we gather here this morning in this special place, we are so thankful for the opportunity to come together and to sing your praise, to pray to you, to hear your word, and to be challenged by it. Help us in this special hour to fix our eyes on you, to be renewed and restored, to be prepared, for what will face us in this week ahead. We lift up to you our praise and thanksgiving for the many blessings that you have given to us. Help us to not hold on to them all with tight fists, but to have open hands as people who acknowledge that you are a God of abundance. And what you have blessed us with, you have blessed us with to give blessings to others. And Lord, as we gather, we also bring with us all of our burdens, our worries, and concerns. We thank you for being with us in these times and help us to see that you do indeed journey with us through thick and thin. Give us the strength this morning to leave our burdens with you and to go out into this world ready to serve ready to be joyful and hopeful people. Lord, as we close this time of prayer, we take this opportunity to join our voices together 
in the prayer that you taught your followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'd like to invite our children forward for Children's Moment with Miss Rachel. Good morning. How are y'all? Y'all doing good? It's like I told the 830 group, we will be celebrating y'all senior Sunday before we know it because time goes by so fast. It doesn't seem like it, but to us parents, it goes by fast. Um, just a quick reminder about our end of the year party. We've got it all set up to do some field day games. We've got the dunk tape ready to dunk Pastor Reed and Pastor Arthur. <laughs> so... It's a little hard. We've been practicing. It's hard. So y'all are going to have to come ready to throw. Um, you need to sit down. You what? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You think you can get them in? Okay. So y'all are going to have to come try. It's a big circle. You'll see it. So just a reminder, y'all join us after. It's, um, it's been a morning with some of the food trucks calling this morning, but we're making it work. So um, y'all join us. And then I am going to ask y'all a question. Is there anybody here that's afraid of the dark? It's okay. Everybody's afraid of something. So if you are, no, you're not. Of, of what? Jump scares. Jump scares. Oh, jump scares. We'll talk about it at Children's Church. I'll tell you what it is. Okay. Um, is there anybody afraid of anything else? If you're not afraid of the dark, what's something else you might be afraid of? Andrew? You don't know? Some people might be afraid of bugs. You're afraid of bugs. Or thunderstorms. Snakes. Lavender, you got one? Leeches, okay. Snakes, Sam? Tsunamis, okay, see, so, so everybody's scared of something, right? Even adults are scared. Did you know that? That adults can be scared sometimes? And so when Jesus had told his disciples that he was going back to heaven to be with his father, they got scared. They were worried about what it was going to be like without Jesus there with them, like right there with them. And so they were scared, and Jesus knew they were scared. And so he was going to give them a gift. And so he asked God if he could send them down the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit um, was going to be with the disciples, and um, the Holy Spirit's with us. And that means Jesus is with us every day, right? So if we're scared or afraid, we can pray to Jesus, and we can feel that he's right there with us. Okay, so I want y'all to remember that this week or when you face hard times that Jesus is always with us, okay? So let's, we're going to go to Children's Church. I'm going to say a prayer, and then we will go. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who guides us and calms our fears. We also thank you for the promise that one day we will be in heaven with Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. Would you please stand for our hymn of preparation?
Before we hear today's scripture, would you join me in the prayer for illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The scripture today comes from John chapter 14, verses 23 through 29. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them. We will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I love a good graduation speech. There's nothing better than uh, lining up and being uh, perfectly arranged, uh, alphabetically, geometrically, uh, perfectly aligned to where you can see up on that stage that uh, pile of diplomas that you've been working so hard for, years of achievement surrounded by uh, friends and family members and those in, invested in these accomplishments. And, uh, and it's just right there. You can see it. It's almost within touch. And then you have to sit through the graduation speech. You've got to listen to all the words of, why, uh, words of wisdom or uh, kind of words of encouragement or support that uh, really, um, I'm not sure how many of us really uh, internalize too much in that moment. Of uh, all the graduation speeches that I've sat through, um, I can't tell you what a single one was about. Probably about graduation. But the, the weight of the moment of what I particularly was experiencing in, in that moment, uh, my mind was consumed by other things. Um, maybe it would have been more appropriate to uh, sort of reflect on that moment of uh, just how far I had come and uh, the different challenges and accomplishments that I'd have and kind of processing what moving from one chapter of my life was like to move to the other chapter, to the next. But, um, but really, my mind was consumed with thoughts like, don't trip when they call your name. <laughs> or things like, man, I don't have nearly as many cords or awards as some of these other folk. Or things like my mother was probably thinking, uh, he should probably have tried to iron that robe a little bit more. Um, the, the impact of that particular moment uh, sort of drowned out uh, any sort of words of life or wisdom that the speaker on those particular days was maybe uh, trying to convey. Um, and so graduation speeches, they, they have sort of their own place, but I feel like maybe if I was paying better attention in those moments, I would have found uh, that there are some good nuggets to hold on to, uh, some good truths that come out. Uh, because really, when you hear a graduation speech, especially in the culmination of your education up to that point, um, there's really no new lesson. Uh, there, there's no new revelation that comes out in that moment that we have to learn right there on the graduation stage from that speaker. It's uh, more words of encouragement of celebration, of accomplishment, and uh, recognizing that as we move from one chapter of our life to another, that there's different challenges that are going to come. Um, and so we hear words about success. We also hear words of failure. We also hear uh, words of resilience and persistence and continuing uh, to push for your dreams and continue to push forward because we recognize that there's challenging times that come 
when you move from uh, the education that you've learned to now having to put that education into practice. Now, what's interesting about graduation speeches is there's something that sort of translates to us in faith as well. In fact, Jesus gave a graduation speech. Do you all know that? Nobody paid attention to his either. It's fine. But in fact, there is a, 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 a bit of scripture that comes particularly out of the Gospel of John, but in some of the other Gospels as well, um, from the night in which Jesus shared with his disciples and had the Last Supper and he washed his disciples' feet, um, he began to speak to them and to share. And so scripturally, we call this uh, the farewell discourse. Uh, the movement that the disciples will be going from those that were learning from Jesus to Jesus preparing them to having to be the ones that go and carry that message on. The ones who continue on the way without Jesus. And so this farewell discourse, in a sense, at least for our purposes here today, serves almost as a graduation speech for his disciples. And it has all the wonderful elements that every other graduation speech has. It has some encouragement, it has some hopeful words. Uh, peace I leave you, peace I give you, uh, because they're going to need some peace. In fact, when Jesus starts uh, appearing after the resurrection to them, uh, the first thing he tells them is, peace be with you. Like, I told you to have peace, so now I'm going to need you to, to feel that. But as he's teaching them and giving them these, these last words of encouragement, these um, last words of, uh, of resiliency, of hope that will help carry them through, the, the days that Jesus knows will be difficult, uh, will have some darkness in them, you almost see the disciples maybe reacting the same way that many of us do in graduation speeches of sitting there going, what is this guy talking about? We really just want to get to the main point of what's going to matter. And so for the disciples, some of them thought there was going to be a grand culmination of Jesus's ministry. There was going to be a grand moment, a turning point. Uh, there was going to be a new revelation. Or there was going to be uh, this new world that was going to be established. But there's no new lessons at graduation. There's no new revelation. There's no new teaching that will all of a sudden uh, change the way that we see the world. Instead, Jesus tells them, you have everything you need. You have seen what my life looks like. You have seen what the way looks like. And in order for you to continue on in this world, I am going to ask for the Father to send one to you who will continue to walk alongside you in this life. So he begins to teach them, about the Holy Spirit, their graduation gift. That as you go out into the world, as you take this way and you take everything that I've taught you and you go forth and you begin to shine it to the world, you will not be alone. There'll be one who goes with you. And Scripture calls this person all sorts of things. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Advocate, the Comforter, the one who will teach you all that you need to know, the one that will remind you of all that I've already taught you. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will go with you. And so just right before the selection that we read today, Jesus says, you're going to feel orphaned. And yet you are entering a time of your life where you will be closer to God than you have ever imagined before. And those times when it's hard to see God, those times when it's hard to recognize uh, the life of God close to you, and you look around and all you see is darkness, sometimes it's hard to see God because we don't look close enough. We don't look to see the very life of God woven into who we are now. Because we used to move from carrying God around in a box in the Ark of the Covenant, and then we built a house for God in the temple. And then over time, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and the very life of God came down to be with us, Emmanuel, in Jesus Christ. But a time would come when we wouldn't see Jesus. We wouldn't walk with Jesus anymore. We wouldn't see those healings that he performed in our behalf. 
But now the very life of God through the Spirit will be with us, will be within us, will be closer than we've ever imagined in this life. And sometimes I feel like we walk through life as if we don't have any power anymore at all. When God says, you're going to have more power than you know what to do with when this Holy Spirit comes. And so this is the chapter of faith to where we join the disciples. To where Jesus has already gone back up to heaven. And Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And while I'm going to prepare that place for you, God has prepared a place for the life of God within you. In your life, in your heart, in your family, in your school, in your job, in your career, in the hopes and dreams that you're casting from this moment into the next chapter, the very life of God prepared a place for you as well. Because the very heart of the gospel truth is eternal life does not start in the life to come. Eternal life starts here today, right now, because the very life of God is woven into who we are. And God desired to come and to live with us, and dwell with us, and to be our God if we could be God's people. The name for the Holy Spirit in Scripture, a lot of times, is paraclete. And paraclete means uh, coming along beside. How incredible is it that we no longer have to climb mountains to find God? That we no longer have to just simply walk along roadways hoping that we run into God. But that God is already walking beside us, has already come along beside us to walk through life with us. When the disciples experienced the coming of the Holy Spirit, That power and that life and that purpose and that energy compelled them to go outside of their walls and their doors into the streets and transform lives and transform cities and help transform the world. Just imagine what the Holy Spirit can do in our lives and in our communities, in our churches, in our schools, in our families as well. That we go forward with something more amazing and more powerful than anything we've ever imagined before. Because how strange is it that in the hours right before they lost Jesus, it might not feel like there's very much to celebrate, and yet Jesus was telling them that the best is yet to come. He wraps up the the paragraph that we begin reading today in inviting the disciples to rise up and let's get on our way. So happy graduation Sunday. Let us go as God comes alongside of us to share the very life, the ministry, the hope, and the light of God in the world. Because there will be dark times ahead, there will be difficulty ahead, there will be struggle, and there will be new challenges that are larger and scarier than the ones that we just conquered. But those areas are dark and scary because you are carrying a light within you that needs to go into those moments for the world to experience hope and mercy and joy. And as we go forward with the Holy Spirit, we do that as one. As one family, and as one life, and as one hope that points us to the one who loves us more than anything. Amen and amen. Will you pray with me this morning? Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks. Because, Lord, you found fit that even in your farewell to your disciples, you left them a gift. And that gift is our inheritance and is our life and is our power as well in the Holy Spirit. You have taught us what it looks like to be one. You have taught us what it looks like to come together to seek out life and hope, to share light in the dark spaces of this world. And so, Lord, as you come alongside of us in your Holy Spirit, allow us to be on your way. Help us to rise, to go forward, and to help share that light that the world needs now more than ever. 
As we go forth, we do all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As we close out in our worship this morning, I invite you to rise as we sing our closing hymn, There's Within My Heart a Melody. I invite you to be seated. We have a special announcement to make today. So uh, for many of y'all that are professional Methodists, uh, understand that this is a season of appointments in the year for the uh, Methodist Church. And so um, uh, we'd like to announce that um, all of your pastors are returning for the next year. As far as right now, as far as we know, as we know, crazy things uh, tend to happen. Uh, but as we realized uh, a, a couple weeks ago during our, our visioning sermon series, uh, we had a period where we talked about partnerships um, between uh, local Methodist churches that are here in Alabaster and in Shelby County. And uh, that statement uh, grew and took on a life of its own and entered into some conversations with uh, a local Methodist church as well as um, the North Alabama Conference. And so uh, beginning on July the 1st, we are creating a partnership 
uh, with us and Camp Branch, United Methodist Church, uh, just across the way, um, off of... um, Uh, just on the other side of Alabaster. And so what that ministry looks like in a shared partnership is asking, uh, what does it look like for uh, two different congregations um, with different gifts and different abilities to come together and ask, uh, what can we do together uh, to help the city of Alabaster and our communities? And bringing our gifts together in really unique and creative ways uh, to really help build the kingdom of God um, in, in between our ministries together. And so a part of that partnership has been adopted by the North Alabama Conference, and they are funding um, a part-time appointment for Camp Branch's uh, senior pastor to still be uh, serving as the senior pastor at Camp Branch United Methodist Church, but also serving in a small part-time role here at Alabaster. And so we'll be sharing in her ministry in a small way. And so we're welcoming uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Kelsey Grissom as a partnering pastor here at Alabaster. And so what that will look like is she will remain the senior pastor at Camp Branch United Methodist Church, uh, but you might see her in some of her roles in helping us build uh, ministry connections between our congregations, but also building ministry connections here in the community as well. So there might be some Sundays where uh, Dr. Grissom comes and preaches um, as uh, myself or one of the other pastors can have an opportunity to go and to preach and share at Camp Branch. Uh, You might see uh, Dr. Grissom helping build some uh, ministry connections between programs that we have at our church and with Camp Branch. Uh, You might see her leading in some ways of celebrating and hosting some events in the community and between our two congregations as well. Uh, So Dr. Grissom is um, a longtime resident of Shelby County. Uh, She has served in several capacities here. Um, Her husband is a Pelham police officer. They've got several children here that um, go to school in our area schools. And so uh, we are excited um, for the ministry that that allows us to kind of partner together to remain two distinct congregations, but with an eye of building uh, a stronger corner of the kingdom of God here in Alabaster. And so if you have a chance, um, if you begin to see her after July the 1st, uh, be sure to extend your welcome and, uh, and uh, your hospitality to her and her family uh, as we might have some events to be able to share and to celebrate that partnership uh, together. So it's our joy to be able to, uh, uh, to welcome Dr. Grissom and uh, to share in that ministry as well. Uh, but as I invite you to rise uh, to receive our benediction this morning. Uh, As we go forth from here, uh, we go forth with the very life of God woven into who we are. We go with the God who comes along beside us. We go forth with the power, with the love, with the light of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's go forth as one. Amen.